Hello everyone, what's up? In this video I'm going to show you how I painted this awesome 3D printed model which is a tribute not only to the legendary Deodra and Speeder but also to this Horus Heresy illustration. Along the way I'll tell you the full story of the Grav Attack vehicle from White Dwarf Magazine issue 95. Oh and by the way I'll be giving away the fully painted model on March 9 so make sure to watch until the end if you want to know how to participate in the giveaway. Here are some images of the STL courtesy of my friend Jan aka Magostera who not only created this but was kind enough to print it, build it and magnetize it for me. And speaking of magnetization you can see how this has been designed from the ground up precisely for that. Both guns are built so you can have not only rotation but also elevation on them. A truly stunning design by Jan whose work you can now get on Colts 3D. Link in the video description. Moving on from SCL to resin, this is the Graph Attack vehicle after priming. The first step was to create a metallic undercoat with AK metallic smoke which you may remember from my Custodes videos. This dark metallic enamel paint always sprays beautifully and has an ultra realistic finish so it's really hard to go wrong with it. After that I decided to also apply another trick which I've used many times with my custodes or shall I say custodes, my secret modeling technique. The truth is that at this stage I really wasn't sure of how to approach the third legion purple. I could either use a candy purple paint from Mr. Color which I had already tested with great results or I could go for a metallic purple instead. The modeling was really only required for the former rather than the latter but I wanted to leave both options open. In the end having consulted with Jan I settled for metallic purple and I thought I would give it a try with chipping fluid so I sprayed that first. Having masked some areas carefully I went for army painter royal purple from their air metallics line which I have never tried before. I sprayed that at around 20 psi with my Badger Patriot 105 with just a few drops of acrylic thinner added. I tried to spray this the way that I normally would with a lacquer paint that is to say with a very gentle and semi-transparent first coat followed by a gradual buildup of opacity. This method worked quite well despite the paint being water-based and there were only a few interruptions here and there due to dry tip but overall I was quite impressed with this paint. What I did notice however is that in order for it to be fully opaque the modeling pattern had to be completely covered that is to say I just wasted my time with that step. The paint just did not have enough transparency to allow for any sort of meaningful pre-shading. Chipping regretfully was a similar story. I activated the chipping fluid with some water and use a combination of a toothpick and a brush to create the chipping effects. But this didn't really work as intended. This paint was extremely sluggish in reacting with the chipping fluid and once it did the paint came off in flakes which looked rather ugly. Again live to learn, it's always worth experimenting with new techniques and new products rather than doing the exact same thing over and over. If you want to replicate my finish therefore just make sure to skip both the scotch bright and the chipping fluid steps to maximize efficiency. This next step however was in no way a mistake or a waste of time. In fact I would say that this enamel wash worked beautifully as you can see. The beautiful panel lines and indentations which Jan has given this vehicle make it perfect for a panel wash. Oh and before someone asks, yes of course I varnished it first using Tamiya X22 Clear thinned with lacquer thinner. It never fails. For a spot of post shading I went with an ammo shader first, night blue but as it's often happened to me lately I found it rather hard to control even though I had switched to my new HS Infinity. I then switched to the Black Umber liquid pigment by Life Color and things went much better and much more smoothly that way. It's also this liquid pigment that I use for the streaks and for the suit effects by the way. After that there were a few things that I did off camera like respraying over some of the larger chips 
but at least I can show you how I achieved that nice finish on the main gun. This jet exhaust lacquer is transparent and it's designed to go over an existing metal base coat. But I did promise that I'd tell you the story of the original deodorant speeder, didn't I? Let's travel back in time together to November 1987. This is what Dwarf Magazine 95. We're looking for the heavy metal section by one Rick Priestley, whose name, funnily enough, has been misspelled. So who is this Rick Priestley guy, do you ask? Well, I was only nine when this came out, and it would be years until I would even hear about Warhammer, let alone play it. But I'm sure most of you know that Priestley was the lead designer of Rogue Trader, that is to say, the very first edition of 40k. And as you can see, he did much more than just write rules or lore. This is a full-blown step-by-step tutorial on how to build your own deodorant speeder. I'm sure you will agree that this article is written in a really funny, tongue-in-cheek style, which the oldest or more learned among you will also recognize from Rogue Trader itself. Those were the days, if you ask me. But I digress. On the next page, we get some really cool pictures of the finished speeder, with that weathered gray finish and really cool yellow markings. A very interesting look, in my opinion. Rather industrial in style, and as far as I can see, rather far from the 40k conventions of the 90s. And just look at those space marines. I mean, Citadel's new space marines. <laughs> Do those ring any bells, Horus Heresy players? On the third page, we get to see some really interesting models, like some conversions, an example of Dreadnought armor, a marine gunship, and a so-called Groundhog. But let's get back to our speeder, shall we? Behold the Grav Attack Vehicle. This right here is one of the earliest bits of lore that exists not only for a 40k speeder, but for any vehicle. Yes, that's right. Why? Because, as Rick mentioned earlier on, at this stage, Rock Trader didn't have any vehicle models whatsoever. You don't believe me? Don't take my word for it. Let's check out the actual first edition rulebook. There, you see? No vehicle models. Oh, and you're encouraged to use whatever you can find. Like giant robots and spacecraft. Well, that's just like GW now, isn't it? <laughs> So, did any vehicles get any lore? Let's see. So, we have something called a sand crawler. How original. We have a flyer that someone made with plastic bits, just like our speeder. And right here, they mentioned a land speeder, which has stats similar to ours. However, the description you will notice is entirely generic, so I don't think this really qualifies as lore. We also get juggernauts, landing pods, those two sound familiar. What else? Oh, finally, we get the Land Raider, which is shown here in all its Crimson Fist's glory. And it does get a bit of a backstory. So, as I was saying earlier, this article is not only really funny, we've learned that it's also one of the earliest examples of 40k vehicle lore, so to speak. By the way, I mentioned the Horus Heresy illustration before, which I wanted to pay tribute to. This is it. The artist is Eric Wren, and this was published on the Visions of Heresy anthology. As you can see, I wanted to stay true to the illustration while swapping a few colors here and there to what I thought would look cooler on the physical model. And speaking of lore, some of you will remember my History of Forge World videos. Instead of ripping off Lexicanum or some wiki, I'm all about substantiating my points with actual research and using primary sources. So if you want to learn more about the true history of the Horus Heresy models created by the original Forgewall team, I got you covered. Incidentally, re-watching these videos of mine may place you in a better position to win this fully painted speeder. Why? Because I'm not just giving it away. Oh no, anyone can do a simple giveaway. Instead, my mid or top tier YouTube members will be able to compete for it in a live quiz, where they will have to test their knowledge of precisely these videos. A quiz, you say? Yes, indeed. And it will look like this. Check it out. The winner gets a speeder. 
or shall I say the Grav attack vehicle. Anyways guys, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Before I let you go, I would like to thank all of my YouTube members, but in particular my friend Jan, who's made all of this possible. I hope that whoever wins this Peter enjoys it as much as I did painting it. I'll be back soon, but in the meantime, remember, keep it up and weather it out.